are ready to take your rightful place. Can you make some noise? Hallelujah. Some of, of us are still not in the mood yet. But I'm calling your spirit into the mood of taking your rightful place. Can you look at your neighbor? Tell him or her, you are beautiful, you are handsome. <laughs> Tell him God is proud of you. Hallelujah. Can we have our seat this morning? We'll be inviting testifiers this morning. If you have testimony, please come forward. For those that have signified early this morning, I want you to come forward and share your testimony. We prayed one prayer this morning. We said, God, make me a testimony. How many of us is ready to be a testimony at the end of this program? Can you signify by make, raising up your hands if you are ready to be a testimony? Do you know when you are a testimony? You will definitely easily be a blessing. Because people will look at you and do what? Praise the Lord. People will look at you and do what? Worship God. You yourself, you will look at yourself and say, Ah, ah my sister, my brother, come and take. At the end of this program, I, I want to say come and take. Mommy, I want to bless you. <laughs> Testify us, please come forward and give your testimony. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. We want to return all glory to God Almighty. We want to thank him for his successful evangelism yesterday. We want to thank God because everything worked in our favor. The rain, the traffic, everything. Despite all other activities that were happening yesterday, God took absolute control. Yes. Even despite all activities that were happening, we stood out. And we just want to give God all the glory. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank the Lord. Yeah, yesterday was our wedding anniversary. We give God the glory. And my second testimony is... Uh, Ojo Idunu, alone. Eh, I only saw the banuje na yewa noruko Jesus. The day my daughter completed a year, I went to drop her and the siblings. So I had a domestic accident, which I did not get injured. On a norms, if that glass would have caught my hand, I won't. I would have been admitted in the hospital, but here I am standing, giving God the glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus. If you are clapping, clap for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. Uh, um, this October is a beautiful month for me and for my family. Um, and I know that um, God is said to do great, greater things. I have two children that the Lord gave me in this month of October. My first son and my last um, baby. <laughs> that is 18 now. We thank, I bless the Lord for their lives. I want to thank God because yesterday was um, Fumidara's birthday. And I remembered 40 years down there when... It was a day before, it, it was a public holiday, and 30th, where at the church I was in then, we had to go for evangelism, just like we did yesterday. And I was every pregnant, but I insisted I must be with them. So we danced all around singing and all of that, just like we did yesterday. We, I mean, preaching to people and all of that. And the next morning, before the daybreak, I gave birth. And I, I remember that. Even my, my pastor's wife then had to call me and say, hey, so do you, oh, no, you ate in my house after the evangelism. It was because you were going to <laughs> give birth. And so we named her Good News just because of that, because she came from evangelism. So I'm thanking God for that privilege again that we could do that yesterday in commemoration of our birthday. Uh, the Lord is good. The Lord is a great God, a God of covenant and Peace. I bless the Lord that we are in the Lord and we are serving him. 
praise ye the Lord. And even Fimidara himself herself was, uh, yeah, doing evangelism and dancing for the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Miri Olashoju. I wanted to give glory to God Almighty for giving me the grace and the opportunity to add another year to my year today. I give him all the praise, all the honor and adoration of his daily name in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I also want to thank God for what God did in my life yesterday. Yesterday, I um, joined the evangelism yesterday. Then, as I was as we were in the field, going up and down, then I now remember that ah, my shop was locked. Then I will check my phone. Ah, maybe a customer will call me because I'm expecting two customers. So they didn't call me. And I roll it. I said, okay, God is good. Then I went home. As I wanted to drop in the bus, and I told uh, mommy, I said, jokingly, I just told him, I told her that, ah, God, uh, we've, we've done God's work today, but God is going to do our own work today. Then he said, amen. Then I just go jokingly. Immediately, I just get to my shop. I wanted to open shop. Customer is waiting for me. I just give glory to God. Before I close yesterday, I close after 10 yesterday. I give praise unto holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, my name is Ariel Loa. <laughs> yeah, I want to thank God. Um, something, th two things I've been waiting for for the past three years. Like, there was one and there was backup. Even, and God just did everything in the past week. Every, both of them, even the main one and the backup, God just served it on the path of gold for me. Like, so yeah, I just want to thank God for it. Yeah, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank Jesus for that testimony. If you know the deep, uh, uh, what he's talking about, you will bless the name of the Lord for him. So praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. To his feet thy tribute bring. Ransom him, restore forgiving. Who lie thee is precious. Everybody praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise our heaven. Everybody help me sing him, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah, praise him, hallelujah, praise our heaven. Everybody help me join in singing, praise him, praise him, hallelujah, praise him. Thank God for the gift of life. Indeed, God has been so faithful. Even when times are bad, God is always good. The Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered them out of them. I want to thank God because the book of Jeremiah 20, 11 says, for the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. You know, that scripture is heavy and is indeed with me. I want to thank God this morning for another grace, opportunity, and privilege he has given unto me. Father, I want to say, blessed be your name because of my life, for the gift of life. Thank you, ancient of this. In Jesus' mighty name, I'm giving thanks. Amen. Everyone, let's bless the name of our Lord Jesus. Who did it? Who did it? If you think it's easy to celebrate a year's birthday, you need to go to the mortuary and understand what is going on. Go and see the family of those being buried. You will understand what it means to celebrate a year's birthday. 
for, for somebody to just come out and say, God kept me. It, they, they are deeper things than we think or we hear. People can't really express themselves even when they say it to you. But when you pass through that journey, you will have full of the understanding of what is going on. Can somebody shout, praise the Lord to the name of our Lord Jesus. Uh, at the back there, your hallelujah is not roaring. Shout the hallelujah like you believe. Uh, <laughs> praise the name of our Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we have testified. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Please let's rise up on our feet as we take our hymn, hymn 215, in Christ alone.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Let us all have our seats. Praise the Lord. We are in a section of prayer now. We want to pray for knowledge and understanding to manifest our kingdom identity. Praise the Lord. Let us open our Bibles to Colossians chapter 1. We read verse 9 to 12. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 to 12. Verse 9. For this cause, we also, since the day we've had it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all understanding and spiritual, in all, sorry, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good works and increasing in the knowledge of God. Verse 11, strengthening with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Verse 12, the last verse, give thanks unto the Father which had made us meant to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Praise the Lord. Identity means the quality that makes a person or an organization. We can also see it as the quality or a belief system. Praise the Lord. For one to manifest his kingdom identity, you must know that quality that you have in Christ Jesus. You must put away those old beliefs. That is not making you to manifest that kingdom identity in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. And this whole month has been put together by the youth committee of this mission to make us to be able to know that identity that we have in Christ Jesus. So we are to take this opportunity as a great privilege for us to be able to now move into a new dimension. Praise the Lord. After this month. We must have that knowledge. We are ready, the team, they are ready to impact that knowledge onto us so that we can change that belief system that we have. That whole belief system that has made us for years not to be able to manifest that kinship, that identity we have in Christ Jesus. So let us rest on our feet as we pray. Say, oh Lord, my Father, purge me of Negative qualities, negative beliefs, depriving me of my kingdom identity. Oh Lord, purge me. 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 Purge me of negative attitudes, negative qualities. Negative belief system depriving me of my kingship, depriving me of my king, kingdom identity, depriving me of manifesting my kingdom identity. Oh Lord, purge me. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We also need our understanding to be open. So that as many teachers, many men of God, women of God will be coming to teach us about manifesting this identity that we should understand. Praise the Lord. I remember some years ago, I attended the BSF class. You know, I used to, I used to be a one funny son name like that. And I don't see, I don't see it as anything that should be changed. I felt like, ah, it should be like that. But as the lectures was going on, the facilitator just mentioned, he made a, maybe a clause or a sentence. He said, there are some people that the names they bear goes along with his idols. 
it just dropped in my spirit. I, that understanding just came. That my son name means I'm bearing the names. That name is like you are bearing a name with all the idols. And he said there are 2001. Or two, I can't remember. I said 2000 and something. I said, Ma, my God. He said 201. You see, I felt like I'm battling that class. And go to one corner and be praying, may God have mercy on me. It, because I discovered that God should not hear me at all. For that name that I bear. God should not hear my prayers at all. Praise the Lord. But it's just his mercy that opened my understanding. And I could pick it. You know, a man of God has told me that time, but change this name. You know, he said, change this. this name is not good. I said, no, 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 no. But that day, my understanding opened. And I could see that I'm not supposed to bear this. I should be identified with God. The son, and since I've been bearing that name with God, ah, things have changed. Oh, praise the Lord. So let us pray. Oh Lord, our Father, concerning manifesting my kingdom identity, open my understanding. Lord, open my understanding. Lord, open my understanding. In the name of Jesus, Lord, open my understanding. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, concerning manifesting my kingdom identity. Lord, open my understanding. Lord, open my understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Brethren, the prayers you have been praying for a long time, if your understanding is open to this program, many things will happen. No? The understanding that is open will help you to connect the dots. Praise the Lord. Will help you to see that idea. That idea that God has been putting in your mind. You are wondering how you will go about it. When your understanding is open, you will know you have that facilities. Praise the Lord. You will know you have that thing in you that can make you to do it. Let's pray again. Hold our Father, concerning manifesting my kingdom identity. Lord, open my understanding. Lord, open my understanding. Lord, open my understanding. Let my understanding not be closed. Let my understanding not be darkened. Lord, open my understanding. Lord, open my understanding. Lord, open my understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Oh, Lord, my Father, strengthen me to apply all that I will learn. All that I will learn that in this month. Strengthen me. To apply it to my life. Strengthen me to apply it to my life. Oh Lord, strengthen me. Let me apply them to my life. Lord, let me not just be hearer of all these teachings. Let me not just be hearer of it. Let me be doer of it. Help me to apply them. Lord, help me to apply them. Lord, help me to apply them. Lord, help me to apply them. So that I can manifest my kingdom identity. So that I'll be able to take my rightful place in Christ Jesus. Lord, help me. Help me. Strengthen me to apply all these teachings that we'll be learning this month. Lord, strengthen me to apply them to my life. Lord, strengthen me to apply them. Lord, strengthen me to apply them. Strengthen me to apply them. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let us pray lastly. Oh Lord, my Father, as I begin to apply all these teachings, let it transform me to a better person with better belief system, better qualities, better character, better beliefs, better behaviors. Lord, let me transform me. Let me transform me. Let me be able to identify, to, to manifest my kingdom identity. Let me transform me. Let me transform me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we come to say thank you. Thank you because you are the one that have organized this program to turn our lives around, to make us know who we are in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, open our understanding. Let our understanding not be closed. Help us, Lord, to make use of this opportunity that you have presented to us that we will change for better for the best. We will be better versions of ourselves, better in Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Can you celebrate Jesus in the house? Hallelujah. Can you celebrate this wonderful Live Eagles Choir? All oh, shades and color of energy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Come on, say to yourself, I am the child of a king. My father owns this universe. Say, it is my own. I have dominion here. That is all we have come to express this morning. That we are the children of the king of kings. The one who rules the universe is our father. So we can walk anyhow. Come on, somebody say, I can walk anyhow. Say, I can do anyhow. Say, Mama, your father. Hallelujah.
devil and witches and all that who them be where them they when you have God say I know they walk alone you know there's that song it says I got I got God the Father I walk with God the Son I walk with God the Spirit three I, of them join I know they walk alone I don't know the Liverpool yeah. fans will understand this better see when you enter a place the enemy thinks it's just you. The same way David entered that battlefield that day. And Goliath looked at him and disdained him. He says, who do you think you are? That you will bring sticks and stones to confront me, this giant. And David told him, he says, I may look little in your eyes, but I am not walking alone. If your eyes were open, you will see hosts beside me. But not only the host of angels, you will see the Spirit of God living beside me. But not only the Spirit of God in me, you will see God the Father standing up and God of Son right by his side saying go on I am walking with you I am going with you I am backing you up hallelujah come on say my life is about to change in this season some things something's moving something's changing see his glory Feels like heaven on it. Say something's moving, something's changing. See his glory. Now say it like this. I'm his glory. I am moving. I am changing. I'm his glory. I am heaven on it. not only you do you not only do you represent yourself as an individual but you represent heaven so things have to obey you you know i read an interesting scripture this week in psalms 18 verse 43 it says people i do not know will serve me 
He says, immediately in the year of me, they will rush to me and obey me. It is not because I am something by myself, but there is something I carry, there is something I represent that calls all creation to respond and obey me. Come on, say, I am moving. I am changing. I'm his glory. I am everyone. God and say, God, I honor you. I bless you. You are worthy of my praise, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you are to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the strength of your power in me. I give you the glory and praise. Come on, I don't see somebody worshiping God and blessing him. He's faithful, he's true, he's kind, he's merciful. There is none like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, turn to someone beside you. Say, welcome to a new month. No, in the spirit of the festivities, I'm almost forgetting that it's a new month. Just, just manifesting kingdom identity that is on my head. But we have entered a new month. And you know, there are three more months left in this year and God is able to do exceeding abundance in fact for somebody here these three months will not be like the last three months it's going to show forth exceeding greatness in you in the name of Jesus maybe you don't know God can do things in three months I pray for you in the name of Jesus that in this next three months God is going to give you testimonies that will be difficult to explain in the name of Jesus you know, there are some testimonies that are easy. You know, if somebody is already engaged and about to get married and they say, oh, I got married. We already know you were engaged, so it looks like it. Or if somebody had already saved up for a house or had laid the foundation, raised it or just roofing, then came the next morning and say, um, I completed a house. People would say, oh, thank God, glory to God. But if there was somebody who the landlord was about to evict last month, and this month has two duplex in Banana Highlander. That is difficult to explain. How do you want to start to explain it? Uh, uh, when I started, uh, I was just going somehow, somehow, like play like it just happened. God is giving you a testimony that it will take you a long time uh, to explain it to people. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, amen. Amen. God is about to do great things in our lives. Uh, in this in the remaining weeks coming up this, this month, God is going to be expressing himself in great and mighty ways in our lives in Jesus' name. And my assignment is simple, yeah? Um, opening for the um, speakers that are coming, that will be teaching us, preaching to us, um, and impacting our lives in different ways. Uh, supposed to do an exposition to introduce this theme, Manifesting Kingdom Identity. But before I start, I would like to appreciate our daddy. Thank you so much for this privilege and honor. Can we celebrate our daddy in the house? Come on, youth. I don't see you celebrating our father in the house. See, when, when people are fatherless, you would know. Like, it, if, if one does not have a father, then they would not understand uh, the extent to which it is to have somebody you can be accountable to, you can be responsible to, someone who can look beyond your current state and say, you know what, I see this in your future and I see this ahead of you and I am willing, whether you like it or not, to nod you in the direction of destiny. One more time, can we celebrate our daddy and say, Father, daddy, we thank you, we bless you. We are grateful for your support. Sir. And you know they say, beside, they used to say behind, but it's I know it's beside, because they're actually beside each other right now. Beside a powerful, successful man, you will find a powerful, I was going to say powerful la, and uh, a mighty woman. Can we appreciate our beautiful, wonderful, gorgeous, amazing mommy in the house? God bless you so much. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. And can we give a round of applause to all the ministers in the house who nurture us, who pray for us, 
You do not know the extent of the sacrifice that they have to make, leaving family, leaving their own personal business to come and pray, to fast, to wait, so that you can just receive substance from heaven. We pray that God will continue to uphold you in Jesus' name. It will strengthen you. You will continue to be relevant for him in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we are talking about manifesting kingdom identity. Manifesting kingdom identity. And it's, it's really important in this day and age. I was having a discussion with um, our president. Ah, how can I forget that? Our wonderful, amazing, I call her Madam President, uh, who has been working tirelessly, planning, pushing, fighting people who are not doing things right, not green for you when you want to run away, and making sure everything works. Can we celebrate our youth president, Sister Funto? God bless you. God bless your labor. God bless your sacrifice. In the name of Jesus. You know, the Bible tells us that... Yeah. <laughs> you know, the Bible says that God is not unfaithful, and he will not forget our labor of love in that we do, and we minister and do minister. So this morning, we'll be looking very briefly, uh, trying to see that I have my eyes on the time. Uh, we'll be looking very briefly at identity crisis. We want to talk about the root of this. Like I was saying, I was discussing with her, and um, we're talking about taking your rightful place. And that's the overall theme for this convention, taking your rightful place. But how do we take something we do not even know about? How do we th take something we do not even understand? How do we take something that the context and the concept of how it even begins, where it comes from, how it pertains to us, we don't even know it. How do we do that? So we need to understand that. And it's becoming increasing in this day and age that many people, many young people, and this is a youth convention, so um, many of the, the teachings will be, will be centered and focused on that uh, bracket of people. But of course, it's expansive and it goes across all age groups. But many young people these days are struggling to find what their identity is. Who am I? Who am I? You hear news about people globally committing suicide, people with depression, clinical depressions. The world is now looking for ways to rationalize, you know, this, this idea of being lost. Not knowing who a person is, who they are. Not knowing what they are meant to do. Not knowing what they are here for. And increasingly, many people, many believers inclusive are just following the tune of trends. Trends are shaping our life. Um, what is hip today is what becomes relevant for us. Whether it is the, they're talking about the great resignation now, and uh, Japaism, and, and different things that are happening, and we, we seem to be keen into what the trend is, because we do not fully understand for a certainty what our identity is. Because who we are and the understanding of what we are set to do will give us a sense of purpose, will chart out a direction for us to follow in life and for destiny. We're going to look at two scriptures quickly and um, we're, we're going to delve into this. Can we open our Bibles to Psalms chapter 82 from verse 5 to 8? Psalm 82, 5 to 8. Then we're going to look at Galatians chapter 4, verses 1. Psalms 82, 5 to 8 says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, who is the one saying here? God. Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7 says, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Verse 8 says, Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Very quickly, let's go to Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. The scripture is one that used to scare me. It still scares me a bit when I think about the context. It says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, Differeth nothing from a servant, though he be 
Lord of all. This morning, quickly, we're looking at identity crisis. The crisis of an identity. The crisis of not knowing, not understanding, not perceiving, and not being able to walk in one's identity. And the dictionary defines identity. Um, they can today mentioned when it was... Uh, leading us in prayers, prevailing prayers, that the, it's the qualities of a thing. The qualities of a thing. What, what makes something uh, that thing? It is the condition or character as to who a person or a thing is. So the conditions, the character that make up something. Um, another, another translation or another dictionary, dictionary.com actually says that it is the qualities, the beliefs that distinguishes or identifies one person or from another. The thing that distinguishes you or one person or, one, or a thing or an organization from another. And as good as that definition is, you know, I was praying and thinking about this. And by the way, we, you know, I, I developed a, a greater appreciation for you know, our pastor and the pastors that come to preach for us. You know, the burden of a message, when you're just, it just dominates your mind and almost everything you are doing, your thoughts cannot just, you cannot focus on anything else. You're just like, what will I say? How will I fuse this together? And it's like, things just keep one thought to the other, to the other, and I'm like, God, you have to help me. And it, it made me appreciate what, they, what it does week in, week out. It's, it's powerful. It's powerful. I almost, say, I almost wanted to say, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> Can we just find somebody else to do this? But it's, you know, it, it takes over your mind. And I was thinking about this and praying on it and meditating. And you know, a definition dropped in my heart while I was praying. Like, uh, the identity of a thing, it's not just the qualities that make that thing. It is the summation of the qualities, the potential, and the purpose of that thing. Because the qualities will tell you, the characteristics of that thing, the character, the behavior, the tendencies that it has, um, the composition, what makes it up. But there are things that we do not see about something or a person that is hidden. There are potentials that we might not be able to recognize by just looking at the person or by the person's current condition or state. It doesn't mean that that thing is not there, only that we cannot see it. Then there is the purpose of that thing. What was that thing meant to do? What was it created for? What was it set up for? So the character tells us, tells, the quality tells us what it is. The potential tells us what it can do. And the purpose tells us what it is supposed to do. Because like Paul said, all things are lawful unto me, but not all things are expedient. So the fact that a thing or a person can do a lot of things does not mean that he is doing what he should be doing. Or the, 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 the very fact that the qualities and the condition we see around a person and a life does not clearly state that this is all the person can become. Because the Bible assures us that now are we the sons of God and it does, it does not yet appear what we shall become. So it means there are treasures hidden within us. There are potentials buried within us that we might not see, we might not even recognize by ourselves. But it doesn't mean that it should be, it's, it's out of our identity. It's still what makes us up. Then the purpose of that thing. So I might have the propensity or the potential to sing and to act and to, you know, speak and all that. But what, did, what if God called me to develop economic models that would transform nations? And these potentials are just platforms that will connect me to the people that will bring about the network and the connection that I need to fulfill that purpose. Just like Jesus, he had the potential to heal everybody he met. But he told the lady, he said, I was not sent to you. Even though I can. Even though I have the potential but it is not in my purpose to do this. So the identity of a thing is the summation of those three. The qualities of that thing, the potentials that that thing has, and the purpose for which that thing was made. Amen. And 
Of these three, the purpose is what is at the heart of identity. The very core of, of a person's identity is that person's or that thing's purpose. Your identity cannot be different or cannot be divergent from your purpose. It has to align. There has to be a convergence. <clears throat> what truly defines you on earth? What truly defines you as a person? What truly defines an organization? Whatever it is, is what that thing is made to do. I can use this microphone to beat somebody. But that is not the identity of this mic. It is not a cane. The purpose is to speak. So its identity is defined by what the manufacturer made it to do. And the very core of identity crisis in our day and in our age is that many of us have not learned our purpose. We have not intermeddled with the manufacturer so much that we are able to identify that thing that we are created, we were meant and set to do. And so because we don't know that, many of us, we stay in the, in the, in the state of our qualities. We want to exhibit our qualities, the things we can do. Oh, I am a banker, I am a lawyer, I am a businessman, I am a musician. We stay in that place and that is all we see that define us. Some of us even try to fulfill our potentials. Oh, I can do this, I can do that, I can do that. So we try to do this. We push ourselves in this area. We try another thing. We're like, I can do many things. But very few of us have been able to discover and to set that purpose that God has set for us to do. And that is causing a crisis in our day and age. This confusion as to who am I? What am I meant to do? What am I supposed to do? It's causing a huge problem for human beings. You know, even the psychologist tells us in the hierarchy of needs as a human being, it starts with the physiological needs, it goes to the social need, it goes to the esteem need, then it goes to uh, the fourth one, the need to be appreciated and all that. And the fifth one is purpose. The need to fulfill something. And the researchers and psychologists tell us that only less than 1% of the global population have ever crossed that threshold to feel that certainty that I have fulfilled my purpose in life. So it's almost like many people are just drifting and doing many things, trying to find meaning for something and not going to the source, which is God. Where did this crisis begin? Where did it begin? You know, when we read the book of Genesis, chapter 1, right from the beginning, Genesis 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 26, you know, God said there, he said, let us make man in our image. So we know what the qualities of man will be. He would be like God. So God has arms, God has legs, God has eyes. So we know that those are his qualities. He will be in our likeness. So the things we can do, he can do as well. He is like us. He can exhibit the traits that we can in our image, in our likeness. Then the third thing he said is, and let him have dominion over the fishes. Then he set his purpose. So the qualities were set. The potentials have been defined. Then at the back, he set his purpose. It will look like us. It would be able to do the things we can do. And then he would have dominion. And so the first man that God created was sure of his identity. He never had to doubt. Every time he was wondering, what do I look like? He, has to look, he just needs to look at God. And he's like, that is what I look like. Every time he's like, what can I do? He just needs to look at what are the things God can do. Then he's like, oh, those are the things I can do. What am I supposed to do? He just needs to go back and listen to God. You have to have dominion over all those things I have set. So he was sure in himself. His identity was fixed. There was no controversy. There was no crisis for him. But somewhere along the line in chapter 3, something happened. Something happened. The Bible tells us that the serpent was more cunning than all the creatures that God has created. And he came and he tempted the woman, saying that, did God truly say that you cannot eat anything? 
And the woman said, no, 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 no. God did not say we can't eat anything. I'm paraphrasing now. He only says this tree of knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat this. And in, um, in the next verse, it's the devil said, he said, and he said, who told you, okay, not that now, uh, in verse 5. So in verse 5, the, the devil was talking to the woman now and he says, for God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when I was trying to prepare for this and meditate, God stopped me. I was looking at it. I looked at this, the verse for days, like trying to understand why I'm fixated there. Then I saw the operational word there. It says that your eyes will be opened and you shall be like God. For the woman, for man to believe that if he eats that fruit, he will be like God. It's for him to first accept that originally he's not like God. Before you can accept that, oh, if I drink this water placed here, I will grow one foot taller. I don't think I want to do that though. Um, for me to believe that if I drink this water, I will be tall. It means I already believe that I am short. And this is what will make me tall. And the moment the woman began to entertain the idea that, oh, maybe I'm not like God. Maybe I'm not really in his image. Because the devil was pitching something new to her. Saying that when you eat this thing, you would look like God. Then she started listening to another voice trying to convince her that you are not enough. What you are currently is not the best you can be. What you have been made is deficient. You are not complete in yourself. God did not make you completely. There is something different that you need besides this that God has told you. The moment she began to entertain that thought, then the conflict started. Am I really like God or do I become like God after eating this? So the moment she yielded or man yielded to eat that fruit of the knowledge of good and evil to become like God, they accepted that they were not originally like God. And they needed something to make them like God. And that crisis began from that point. And the root of this came from something they heard. That was why when God came and was looking, he was looking for Adam in the garden and could not find him. He says, Adam, where are you? And Adam responded, he said, I was naked, so I hid myself. And God said, who told you? Who told you you were meant for less? What was that thing that told you that you, were, you are not enough? Who told you you are not like me? Who told you you are not complete? Who told you there is a deficiency in you? Because remember, in Genesis 2.25, the Bible told us that the man and the woman, they were in the garden and they were both naked but not ashamed. So who told you that nakedness was a thing of shame now? What changed between Genesis 2.25? And Genesis 3 verses, verses 11 or verse 10 now, where the man said, I was naked so I hid myself. What changed? They listened to a voice. They listened to a voice tell them that you are not enough. You are not complete. You have not attained that which God has for you. You, are not, you, you don't have all it takes. And in this day and age, in this generation, many times we are surrounded by things, not only words, verbal words, but situations that tells us that we would never make it. That tells us that we are not good enough. That tells us that, you know what, um, you, you, th th there is no precedent in your family to show that, there is no precedent in your family to show that you can even attain this. Some of us, the people around us, the people we grew up with, there was nobody around us to even typify or to even model the kind of life we, want for, we wanted for ourselves. There was nobody around to show forth, to, to exemplify the things that we, we desire, the thought in our heart that we want to achieve for ourselves. So the crisis begun here. Man listened to a strange voice. 
man listen, listened to a, a to a set of words that did not come from God, and that birthed a crisis in him. And the struggle began between who God said he was and who somebody else said. So the question is, the identity you think you have, or the state, or the mindset you have concerning yourself, who is the person that told you you are that thing? Is it God? Or is it a situation? Or is it family members? Or it is, your, is, it your, is, is it your colleague? Is it your boss? Is it members of your church? Who told you? Who set your identity? And the thing about identity is, identity is not usually inside out. What I mean is, a thing does not derive its identity from within itself. Identity is usually conferred on something. That is why when a child is born, it does not come with a name. Somebody with authority, somebody with power over it, like a father or a priest, has to come and confer a name on it. That was why when God created all the animals to set their identity, he brought them to Adam. He said to see what he will call them. And whatsoever the man called them, that was what they were. So man conferred the identity of the animals to it. Now the question is, who is conferring an identity on you? Is it the word of God? Is it your conditions? Is it your situation? Is it the things you're going through? Is it the things you see around you? Is it social media? Is it the economy? What is driving our sense of identity in this age? And that is causing a huge problem. Because where you draw your identity from will be the, the, the line you are driving your purpose towards. So many of us, we, are, we, we have been inundated by lots of words. And our original identity that God set within us is now lying buried within us. And now struggling and it's like there is a conflict between what God said we should be and who we are seeing ourselves to be. That is where the crisis is because identity crisis is when a person has two ideas on their own uh, person, on the person they are. And they cannot make out at any point in time who they really are. So I have been renewed in Christ, but I am still wallowing in sin. I have been made a new creation. I am the head and not the tail. We sang it. I am the child of the king of the universe. And we live in a state of penury and in a state of struggling and we see afflictions. And it's a conflict. There's a crisis. What am I really? And the voice of the world seems to get louder and louder and louder. That it becomes very difficult for us to really understand where we should position ourselves. And until we know and understand, until we know and understand who God wants us to be, then we, this crisis will continue over and over again. And we would end up missing purpose. I pray we would not miss our purpose in the name of Jesus. That which the Lord has set for us to do, we would not fall short of it in the name of Jesus. That is why that scripture says, they know not, they do not understand. The Bible says in verse 7 of that scripture, Psalm 82, it says, I, the Lord said, you are God's. All of you are the children of the Messiah. That is the proclamation of God. That is the identity is set for us. Ye are God's. You are like me. You have all the qualities that I have. You have the potentials that exist in me. Your purpose is marked by me. I have set you on the path of greatness. I have positioned you. I have set good things for you to do. Things that eyes have not seen. Things that ears have not heard. Things that hearts have not perceived. Are the things I have called you to become. He says, I have said by myself, ye are gods. All of you are children of the most high. And the next verse has got to be one of the saddest scripture in the Bible. It says, but you shall die like ordinary men. Why? Because they know not. Because they do not understand. 
and the foundations is out of course. And they group on in darkness. So whatever God has said concerning them cannot manifest. Whatever God has prepared for them cannot manifest because they do not know. They do not understand. And in Galatians chapter 4, we see an heir as long as he is a child. What does it mean to be a child in the spirit? It means someone who does not know. That's why the Bible says, in understanding, be men. If we are going to manifest kingdom identity, we cannot afford to continue as children. We have to grow up. We have to grow up. We have to stop not knowing. We have to stop, get out of the confusion. We have to stop just living like uh, we, we have no responsibility to destiny. As youth in this day and age, if we are going to manifest kingdom identity, believe you me, we have enough youth in this church to change this nation. This entire nation, we have enough youth to change this nation. Philip entered a city and the Bible records that there was joy in the whole city because one man entered into an entire city. The Bible records the disciples, the apostles, we enter a place. Uh, they will say concerning them, look at these people, they have turned the world upside down. Jesus came on earth, our prime example. He spent only three and a half years on this earth in ministry. And 2,000, over 2,000 years later, the, the, the works that he has done, we still talk about it today. They are still ever relevant. So until we grow up, we come out of this groupiness where we think um, we, we, God, we are entitled to this entitlement mentality. You know, some of us are even entitled Christians. We believe that we are children of God, so things should happen for us. It, yes, I, I know that the Bible has made provisions for us, but there is a responsibility that is conferred on the believer that we are supposed to grow up. Because as long as an, a heir or an heir is a child... He is no better than the slave. There is no point having the promises. There is no point having all the declarations if we are going to not understand and learn how to use them. Because God is not a waster. He will not commit treasures to swine. He will not commit treasures to children who would mess it up. The Bible says they know not they do not understand. They wallow up in darkness. And many of us are doing the same. How many, how many of us have really sat down some days to really think about it? What am I supposed to be doing? Do you think about that? Do you think about it? What am I supposed to be doing with my life? What does God require of me in this life that I have been given? What was I set to do? What have I been fixed in this place to do? Or do we just continue in darkness? And yes, we make all these excuses. You know, we have to make a living. It's stressful to live in Lagos. There is no time to sit and all that. But do we compromise our destiny for the sake of the vicissitudes of life? Do we allow the things that we see swallow up our identity? Some of us, it is challenges that we are facing that have swallowed up. We... we we, we, we don't even think kingdom anymore. We just think solution. How do I get out of this? We have been, we have been, our identity have been swallowed up. Some situations have taken over the identity of some people. Like the woman with the issue of blood. We never knew if she was a singer, if she was a market woman. Her identity was entrenched in a challenge. The woman with the issue of blood. That became the notable thing about her, pers her, her personality, her identity. And many of us, we have allowed, you know, as we, as we go on in, in different situations, we've allowed life to set an identity for us. And the purpose of this exposition, if you may call it that, is to make us aware that there is something better than what we are doing right now. God has something big. And if we are going to understand our identity and be aware of our identity, then we have got to realize that God has something in store for us that is worth pursuing. 
regardless of how tough life may be, regardless of how distracted this world might be making us, we have to understand, you know, in the theory of uh, transformation, the ADKA model, A-D-K-A-R, uh, they say there are five stages to transformation. The first one is awareness. You have to first be aware that there is a need to change. And then the second one is you have to have a desire to change. So knowing and wanting to change are different things. So you have to have the awareness that I am meant for more. This cannot be what God died for. There is something else God wants me to do. I'm not put here to just make money and get married and give back to the few children and grow old and die. I was not meant for that. Jesus did not die for that. He wouldn't have just died for that. He wouldn't have just kept you all the days of your life for that. He wouldn't have blessed you with enough giftings, with the influence you have, with the capacity you have, with the positions you have, just for you to grow old and just give birth to children. And all that it was said, all that will be said about your being here is that he lived and he died. There is so much more God is calling us to as young people in this generation. And until we take that mantle and stand and say, I will stand on my watch and see what it will tell me. And I'm going to run with the vision that God placed in my heart for my generation. Until we do that, the world is going to dictate what happens for the church and for our lives. We are going to give back to another generation that will be at the mercy of the kings of this age or the princes of this age because they are working tirelessly. They are reshaping the ecosystem. They are reshaping the systems of this world. Setting things to make the things that are abominable in the kingdom. They are making it normal. The world is opening up. It's no longer even a tolerance. Before it was tolerance for the wrong and the vows of this world. Now it's an acceptance, full-on acceptance. You watch cartoons right now and they are gay cartoon characters. And you're like, when did we get here? Children watching cartoon and knowing about gay and lesbianism in cartoons, children's cartoons. And you hardly see anything now. I mean, they, they, there's a lot of hype about diversity, equity, and inclusion globally now. And, you know, there's a lot of push. They are even making policies globally that every organization must have somebody um, in, in, in the United States now. And they say every organization must have um, an age LGBT person on their board of directors, one LGBT person on their management team. They have to be represented. And the world is being shaped by this. And we are starting to learn that it's almost impossible to make it without compromising. It's becoming the norm. And many times here, yeah, even here, when we are doing some of our school of the world, and some points are, are raised about things in the kingdom, and principles in the kingdom, and how believers are supposed to do this and that, and you know, we, sometimes we still struggle because we are like, well, everybody else is doing it. It's the way of the world now. I mean, everybody is giving bribes. Why shouldn't I? Everybody is finding shortcuts. Why shouldn't I? And it's seeming normal. Our conscience is becoming, um, is, we are programming our conscience to not flag all those things anymore. So they just happen and we are like, hmm. And it doesn't prick us anymore. It doesn't change us anymore. Because we are not standing and pushing the agenda of the kingdom for this age. And until we understand that our identity in God's kingdom is to be heaven on earth. Is to represent the kingdom. To remember that kingdom first. I represent, I am a citizen of heaven first. And carry ourselves as such. Then we are going to keep missing the mark. We are going to keep falling short of that which God has said for us. So we have to stop. And rise up and become men. And women. And stop being children. Yes, the inheritance is ours. Because the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If the earth is the Lord's and, and we are his heirs, it means the earth is our inheritance. And the fullness thereof. But until we stop being children with our lives, until we stop playing games with our destiny, until we are willing to arise and say, I will fight for the purpose of God. I will stand for the purpose of God. Then we are, still, we are going to remain children and we are never going to be able to enter into this inheritance. 
And many people are even trying to, some people are even trying to find their purpose outside of God. You know, that was the, that was the temptation. That was the pitch the devil gave to the, the, the woman. He says you would, you, would, you would become like God. You would know what is good, what is right. It's almost saying that you would gain your independence from God. You would be able to make decisions by yourself. You don't need to go to your father to say, okay, God, can I do this and all that. No, you would become, you have the knowledge by yourself. And when you have it, you will know good and evil like God. Then you can live your life independent of God. And many of us are caught in that web as well. They, we, are, we are declaring independence from God. You know, this generation, this is what we are declaring independence from God. We, we only call God to solve challenges. Every other bit of it, God is our fixer. Every other thing we do, we, we do it by ourselves until we need to fix something. So it's almost like God is a mechanic. You invite when, when your engine is showing check engine light. But that is not where our identity has been shrouded. So as we're going to be learning in, in the coming weeks about the power of identity, how to manifest our identity, how to sustain our identity in God, how to overcome the obstacles that this world is placing on our path, we have to first come to the realization that there is something that God needs me to get. If we don't come to that awareness and we don't build a desire for something more for God, then when we hear these other things, it will not click with something in our hearts to make us want to rise up and do something and change our ways and turn around and look for God and pursue God and go to God and say, God, what did you make me for? What did you make me for? What have I been sent to do? What have I been sent to do? How many of us, we are going through this identity crisis, and I'm speaking even to myself, because we have been listening to the voice of strangers. We have been listening to the world speak. And the voice of the world is, as, is now defining who we are. We, have come, we, are. we are so much attuned into become pleasers of men, pleasers of the world. We don't want to cause conflict. We don't want to shake the status quo. When the Bible tells us that Jesus will enter a temple and scatter the old place just because they are not aligning to what the kingdom says that the house of God should look like. We cannot be any different from Christ. God has set us to do something on this earth. God has sent us to do something in this generation. Before anything else, as believers, we have an identity in Christ. In the kingdom of God. And there has to be a burning desire in us to realize what that is. To understand the role we play in God's agenda for this generation. And to learn how to manifest these things. The Bible tells us in Revelation 5.10. He said he has made us kings and priests unto our God. And we shall reign on the earth. Now, are you reigning on the earth? Let's leave the earth. Are you reigning in your circle of influence? Are you reigning in your profession? Are you reigning in your family? Are you reigning in your environment? He has set us as kings and priests unto our God. He says, and we shall reign on the earth. Reigning from the, on the earth is no different from manifesting that's what it's basically saying, manifesting that identity. Kings, rise up. Priests, rise up. We are supposed to be legislating on the earth. The Bible says you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Are we decreeing? Are we reigning? Or are we living on and on, over and over again, at the mercy of what the world dictates? So they have done this. Oh, we just complain about it. We complain about it. We complain about it. And we go on. And we are just. But when are we going to rise up and say, I am a king unto God. I am a priest unto God. I am meant to reign. So brethren, I, I, I pray that we will open our hearts this month 
as we learn these new things, we'll open our hearts to know that there is so much more God can do. You have no idea what God can do with you. You have no clue. You do not fully understand what God can make of your life. So let us arise. Let us stand and let us make a commitment that I will grow up. I will stop being a child. I will take this inheritance. I would take on. I would fully own this identity that I have as a child of God, as a believer. And if you are not one yet, there is no better identity to have than being a child of the Father. Than owning, being, being part of the kingdom. Being able to say, God is my Father. That is the greatest identity any person can have. To be able to say, I am a child of God. is the best identity a person can have. So if you don't have it, you need to make up your mind and say, I need to become a child of the Father. And it's by repenting and having God be your Lord and Savior, having Jesus be your Lord and Savior. And if you already are, then it's for you to arise and say, no more playing around. No more making jokes with my life. No more being a good Christian today and following the world tomorrow. No more letting peer pressure dominate what I will become, what I will do, what I will say. Enough of that. We are either in or out. We either believe this thing or we don't. So let us arise in this age. Let us realize that we have been made kings and priests unto our God. And I pray that we shall reign on the earth in Jesus' mighty name. Can we rise up our feet as we close? Just tell God, God, help me. Help me to know my purpose. Help me to realize what you have set me on this earth for. Help me to understand the calling upon my life. And I say, go ahead this month. Help me, Lord. Help me to receive the word that will help me to manifest kingdom on earth. Help me to receive the word and, uh, and, and, and the, the principles that I need to learn in order for me to manifest the identity that you have bestowed on me. And let's pray to God and say, God, in case I have lost my identity in you, Lord, restore my identity. Restore every lost identity. Whatever identity you have marked for my life that I have lost through sin, through carelessness, through being carried away with the word, Lord, restore that identity to me. In the name of Jesus, Lord, restore the identity to me. In the mighty name of Jesus. And if you don't have this identity as well, you can just talk to God wherever you are and just say, God, I am done living for myself. I am done living apart from you. God, I want you in my life. I am sorry for the way I've led my life thus far. But now, Lord, I want to follow you. I want your identity. I want you to confer your identity on me. Lord, receive me. Reshape my life for you. Reshape my life for you. Help me to live for you. I don't want to live for sin anymore. I don't want to live for self anymore. Father, we pray even this morning, Lord, that you will breath in us a great hunger and a thirst to desire you in the name of Jesus, to run after your purpose, to seek after your purpose, and to, with all that we have, pursue breathing heaven on earth in the name of Jesus. And for every identity lost, we declare they are restored in the name of Jesus. And for all those who are lost themselves, Lord, we pray that you would open your ever-stretched arm towards them, Lord, and receive them into the fold of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Brethren, can we praise the name of our Lord Jesus? I said that deliberately to know how many of us understood the, um, the message. Because if you understand the message, you'll be able to shout hallelujah without thinking about your pocket. 
without thinking about what is happening to you or your current situation. Identity crisis, it, it, it simply means um, you understanding your, yourself and your place in God. That's what it simply means. Do you understand? So if you are sure about what you just listened to, the, the message you've had, and you understand it, can you please stand on your feet and praise the name of our Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I will also ask us to pray for Pastor Mike David this morning. You know, uh, during the week I spent three nights uh, in the church and um, I noticed what went on in terms of uh, pastors coming around to pray for members. You know, I in my mind was like, what, what, why, why are these people? You know, spending nights to pray for us. And uh, it is uh, not falling when I was told that, okay, Michael, come and moderate. I was thinking, man, it's just to come and uh, hold the mic, man. It's a whole lot of things. It is not easy. So now you are going to Bless this man of God and tell God whatever you desire in your heart that God should do it for him. Can you pray that prayer with understanding? I don't want us to murmur. That's why I'm doing that explanation. Please. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now we are going to package our offering. And I want you to package it well. As we will be inviting the choir to, to make us dance as we drop our offering. Today you are not just going to drop your offering. I just want you to, I want to see the attitude of those who understand what, who they are in Christ. I want to see it in us. So this morning... The choir will be singing for us and then we'll be dropping our offering and tithes. Hallelujah. Lord, you are so good. Let us pass the offering basket. Lord, 